Good morning, everyone. I welcome you again for this new episode of TransConnect. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and I am accompanied with me, uh, Dr. K. Jaya Gauri, who is my colleague. This is February 2023, and today we'll be taking the third part of the immunology, which we had uh, covered. That is the basic fundamentals of immunology. In the first part, like you remember, we had spoken about the innate immunity per se. The second part, we covered the acquired immunity and the antigens. This episode will essentially cover up the immunology of antibodies so what are these antibodies what are the type of antibodies and how the switching of antibodies takes place from igm to igg and so on so i hand the presentation over to dr k jaya gauri who will be taking you through this good morning everyone so in this video we'll be covering about antibodies mainly so what are antibodies they are nothing but the serum proteins of the immune system secreted by the B cells in response to antigens. These antibodies are also called as immunoglobulins. How do they get this name? Immuno based on the function that is immunity and globulins meaning globular soluble proteins. So the main function of antibodies is to bind to an antigen. The antigen binding site of the antibody is called paratope. If we recall the antibody binding site of the antigen is the epitope. Coming to the structure of an immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin is nothing but amino acid chains. There are two identical 22.5 kilodalton sized light chains with two identical 55 kd sized heavy chain. These chains are connected by disulfide bonds to give a Y shaped structure. The light chains can be either kappa or lambda. The heavy chains can be alpha, gamma, mu, delta and epsilon. Based on the heavy chains, these immunoglobulins are further classified. The enzyme peptide splits the Ig at a particular site, making it into two segments, the FAB region and the FC region. As we can see here, this is the Y-shaped structure of the immunoglobulin with FAB region and FC region cut by the enzyme peptide. In the center, we can see the hinge region that favors antibody binding to an antigen. It helps in conformational changes of the antibody also. We can see a CH region that is nothing but the constant region. Wherever we can see V, it indicates the variable region. So the central part of the Y is the heavy chain, that is the colored part. And the black and white region is the light chain. So both heavy chain and the light chain have a distal variable segment and a proximal constant segment. This variable region changes accordingly to bind to the antigen. So the FAB, that is the two limbs of the Y, it is a distal end and it has the antigen binding capacity. The FC region, that is the vertical stem of the Y, has the complement fixing site. It favors placental transport and this portion reacts with the anti-human globulin. So based on the uh, heavy chain, that is gamma, mu, or alpha, we can classify the immunoglobulins into IgG, IgM, IgA, IgE, and IgD. So, coming to the characteristics of individual immunoglobulins, as we can see, based on the structure, IgM is basically a pentamer. That is, five parts of IgM combines together and stays as a pentamer. While IgG and IgA are usually monomer, but sometimes two units combine to form dimer also. Regarding molecular dimension and the molecular weight, IgM is larger in size compared to IgG and IgA. Since they are larger in size, they sediment easily. So the sedimentation coefficient is also larger in case of IgM. Regarding crossing of placenta, this is very important. IgG crosses placenta. So we can find uh, IgG in the fetus. This That will be usually from the mother. But IgM and IgA does not cross the, cross the placenta. Regarding concentration in serum, IgG has higher concentration in the serum compared to M and A. In case of temperature of reaction, the IgG reacts at 37 degrees centigrade, that is in a warmer centigrade, while IgM reacts in 20 degrees centigrade. Regarding complement fixation, IgG and IgM are very good at fixing complements, but IgA does not fix complements. Regarding effects of 2-ME and DTT, IgA is partially affected, IgM is totally inactivated, but IgG is not affected. 
regarding valency since igm exists as a pentamer that is five five together and each has two limbs so they are mostly you know they have a valency of 10 but all the 10 need not be active due to structural hindrance etc regarding igg it is usually a bivalent one igm uh, igm is a potent agglutinator it is a very good complement activator also and it is better than igg in case of complement activation naturally occurring igm is seen in the abo blood group system it is also present in lewis p and mns system igm interferes with the detection of clinically significant igg antibodies that is they might be present as a cluster of both igm and igg this will uh, disturb the identification of igg so how can we eliminate the igm from the mixture this can be inhibited by cleaving the igm using 2 mercapto ethanol and dithiotretol what it does is it destroys the agglutinating igm in the mixture of igm and igg so subsequently the mixture will have only igg which will favor the detection of igg so this is only an antibody that can be made by a fetus before and at the time of birth so if a fetus has igg that indicates that the igg has crossed the placenta so the igg actually belongs to the mother coming to igg it exists as a y shaped monomer but changes its shape during antigen binding how does this shape uh, shape change occurs with the help of the hinge region we saw so antibodies to rh group kel duffy kid are all igg in nature now uh, igg can be detected using antibody tests such as reactivity at 37 degree centigrade complement activation and indirect globulin tests small amounts are present in the fetus those are as we already saw derived from the mother in case of igg there are sub classes that is igg 1 2 3 and 4 there are a few points that we have to remember regarding each igg sub class the main thing is igg1 and igg3 1 and 3 are very good complement activators especially igg3 they activate complement using classical pathway regarding igg4 they act in a way very much similar to ige the next thing is igg2 as we know uh, as we see here igg subclass that can undergo covalent dimerization is igg2 so we can remember it as 2 and dimers so covalent dimerization occurs mostly with igg2 but it is not a very good complement activator like igg1 or 3 coming to iga iga usually exists as dimers in secretions this dimers uh, happen with the help of a glycoprotein called t comp component or secretory piece now this t piece makes an iga resistant to proteolysis that is breakdown now one thirds of the anti a and anti b in the abo system are iga the iga in the plasma when transfused to patients who do not have iga that will lead to production of anti iga so for example there is a patient they they do not have iga produced in their blood now we are giving an ffp component that ffp component contains the iga of the donor so this iga of the donor is foreign to the patient so the patient will start developing an anti iga that is antibody against the iga so subsequent transfusion with the plasma uh, ffp containing iga will cause anaphylaxis in the patient now this iga is usually not detected in the fetus or in the cord, the cord serum uh, 20% of the adult levels is found when the child reaches 2 years of age coming to ige IgE generally exists as a monomer at a very low concentration. IgE usually has a very short life span. You can call IgE as an um, you can associate IgE with allergies. That is whenever there is an allergic reaction, the mast cells that is uh, the allergic reaction responding cells they produce IgE. It will react with the foreign proteins in the donor blood causing a uh, producing um, mast cells leading uh, helping mast cells to produce histamine thereby causing allergic reaction so uh, also when a donor plasma contains ige that will also cause allergic reaction so these two points we have to remember in case of blood banking that is patient ige responding to the allergen in the donor or donor ige in the plasma product can also react with the patient blood producing histamine and causing reaction next thing an extra small note on immune system genetics 
that is every individual individual person has a unique immune system based on their genetic inheritance so the transfusion recipients can make antibodies against the allo antigen on the transfused rbcs that is the donor rbcs those people who make such antibodies are called as responders so responders can be classified into high responders and low responders there is another entity called switching now there is a b cell it has been exposed to an antigen it is producing antibodies against the specific antigen that is when they become a plasma cell that is cloned b cell now this plasma cell initially produces igm that is the primary response now when they subsequently get exposed to the same antigen we need igg that is the uh, uh, main uh, antibody of the secondary response now the same b cell that is the plasma cell can produce igg also which was initially producing igm can produce igg also so during the lifetime of a cell it can switch itself to make a different isotypic class of antibody for the same antigen this isotype switching requires dna rearrangement uh, how is this relevant in blood banking we can see antibodies reacting at different temperature and different phases that is igm igg etc so this class switching occurs based on the t cell stimulus as we can see here the t helper cell receives the uh, antigenic particle from an antigen presenting cell it activate it gets activated the activated t helper cell stimulates the b cell to produce antibodies now as we can see here the b cell gets activated to a plasma cell the plasma cell not only produces igm for primary response but also keeps on producing igg for the secondary response ige for an allergic mast cell response and iga in case of secretions so the same b cell is capable of producing multiple immunoglobulins of different isotypic classification be it m p it e or g or a now this is called class switching of b cell coming to antigen antibody interaction an antigen antibody complex is nothing but a three three dimensional interaction which is unique to a specific antigen and antibody antibodies of one blood group system do not bind with the antigens of other blood group system now this three dimensional complex can be called as a lock and key mechanism only one epitope binds to a specific paratope epitope is present in the antigen and paratope is present in the antibody antigen antibody reaction causes multiple complicated effector mechanisms which ultimately destroy antigen now how is antibody antigen reaction important in blood banking first thing is serology that is the laboratory study of an antigen antibody reaction is called serology antibody screening tests like icd cross matching all these depends on the antigen antibody interaction the most important coombs test coombs test also relies on the presence of antibody on the surface of the rbc so this antibody antigen interaction occurs by intermolecular binding forces what are the binding forces that bind an antigen with an antibody the first thing is hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding is nothing but the bond between a hydrogen and an oxygen or hydrogen and a nitrogen they are mostly weak uh, dipole forces but when there are many hydrogen bonds they tend to be stronger the next thing is electrostatic forces as we know like charges repel and unlike charges attract there are small weak charges on the atoms of the molecules that are either positive or negative now these uh, like if they are like charges they repel and if they are unlike charges they attract there are multiple salt bridges that are formed due to these electrostatic forces next is van der waals forces van der waals forces is nothing but we can imagine a large molecule a large molecule is made up of multiple atoms but when the atoms that are distal in the molecule gets attract to the atoms of another molecule van der waals forces exists the next thing is hydrophobic bond this is very important because when hydrophobic acid that is fear of water they repel water they don't want water with them so what they do multiple hydrophobic substances come together and they avoid water this repulsion towards water makes a very strong hydrophobic force um coming to antibody factors that affect an antigen antibody interaction first thing is affinity affinity is nothing but the strength of a single antigen antibody bond so there is an antigen there is an antibody when a single antigen antibody bind the strength of that force is called affinity now that will be a summation of both attractive and repulsive forces the attractive plus forces as well as the repulsive minus forces if we sum it together it indicates affinity the next thing is avidity 
avidity is nothing but the binding strength of a multivalent antigen with an anti sera produced in an individual so affinity was single antigen single antibody avidity is a little bit mass scale that is a multivalent antigen an antigen with multiple valency and multiple binding sites with an anti sera produced in an immunized individual that will also have multiple antibodies so this indicates the functional affinity of an anti serum to the whole of the antigen how is it relevant here high titer low avidity antibodies htla low antigen binding capacity but still shows reactivity at high serum dilution that is called high titer low avidity antibodies next thing is specificity specificity is nothing but the relative avidity that is when there are similar epitopes they give a specific reaction but when uh, an epitope of one antigen is similar to an epitope of another antigen what they do is the antibody against the epitope number a reacts with the other epitope also so here what happens is cross reaction that is the antigens are different but their epitopes are similar enough so that antibody of one epitope reacts with the reacts with both antigens the next feature of specificity is no reaction so either there can be a specific reaction there can be a cross reaction or nil reaction the next thing is valency valency is the number of antigen binding sites on an antibody molecule that is we saw we saw v shaped antibody molecule it has two antigen binding sites so if they exist as a dimer there will be four sites in case of igm they are actually supposed to have 10 sites because they are a pentamer next thing is the host factors there are multiple host factors that determine a good antigen antibody reaction they include nutritional factors hormones genetics age sorry age race of the individual excise level uh, disease any disease conditions and injuries the next important feature of an antigen antibody uh, interaction is tolerance tolerance is nothing but either lack of an immune response or an active immunosuppressive response so either way there is no immune response it can be because of nil response or an active immunosuppression it can be naturally occurring or experimentally induced first example is chimera chimera is nothing but an individual who received in utero transfusion of an abo compatible blood from another zygotic twins that is there are two twin both are having different different uh, blood group antigens but the individual who received a transfusion from the other twin will be continuously exposed to the other blood therefore they don't produce antibody so no antibody is produced against the a and b antigens of the other twin the next thing is rh immunoglobulin a d negative mother delivers her d positive infant so the antibodies against the d positive rbcs are exposed to the mother during delivery what happens is antibodies against the d positive is developed in the mother now these antibodies will cause hemolytic disease of newborn in the subsequent pregnancy now what we do is we passively immunize rh immunoglobulin when we give this immunoglobulin within 42 to 78 hours of delivery we induce tolerance in the mother so what happens is in the subsequent pregnancy these antibodies will not uh, cause hdn in the second fetus so this was the cover, uh, end of the series of immunity uh, thank you so much for everyone uh, i end it with a quote saying there is always a mask inside us and it's called immune system thank you